This video is sponsored by Reverb LP. Click the link in the description below and access exclusive vinyl and CDs while also supporting this channel. The Downward Spiral was the second album by industrial rock and metal band Nine Inch Nails. It's now 25 years since it was released and most fans agree that it's one of those albums that hasn't aged a day since its release. The music on here is so dark, evocative and timeless that it stands out from everything else that I've listened to personally. It features a mix of metal, rock, techno and industrial music that cuts deeper with every single listen. The sound was influenced by 70s rock like David Bowie's Low and Pink Floyd's The Wall, but trust me, it doesn't sound anything like those albums. If Nine Inch Nails' debut album, Pretty Hate Machine, catapulted the band leader Trent Reznor to the front of alternative rock, then the downward spiral turned him from a celebrity to a legend. But what exactly makes the album so outstanding? Let's take a closer look. The Downward Spiral first came into creative fruition after the Lollapalooza festival tour. Trent had already created a name for himself with his first album, Pretty Hate Machine, and with all the newly attained fame, it was easy for him to get the monetary backing to create a second album. Inspired by a negative vibe the band had after staying at a European hotel, Reznor wanted to explore the life of a fictional character who experiences the effects of psychological damage. Trent later drew a link to the conflict he had had with a fellow band member, Richard Patrick, who was known to have a drink or two, and maybe one too much at times. Trent himself wasn't perfect either though. He was addicted to drugs at the time and suffered from depression. This is why a lot of people regard the album as a semi-autobiographical effort, since Trent went through much of the same experiences as the fictional character did. The protagonist is a nihilist who's caught up in a vicious loop of self-control and self-hatred. Throughout the album he shares his thoughts, feelings and actions surrounding religion, violence, disease, society, drugs, sex, and in the end, he even contemplates suicide. It's because of this that it's called the downward spiral. He gradually descends into the psychological depths of hell because of isolation, drugs, and depression. It's a subject matter that hits the hardest on this album and makes it stand out. So let's take a closer look at the lyrics. Mr. Self-Destruct throws the listener into a fast-paced, chaotic world. Some people believe that the phrases in the song are told from the perspective of the protagonist's alter ego. He realizes that he's really not in control of his life at all. He is being pushed around by his feelings of fear and pleasure. There's many indirect references to this alter ego in later songs as well, constantly pushing the protagonist into an internal battle. Hey, pig. Yeah, you. Piggy was the nickname that the rest of the band members used for Richard Patrick. This song might be a reference to the disagreements between him and Trent but it also alludes to the protagonist's growing apathy for the world around him. Later on in the song, we hear the line, nothing can stop me now, cause I don't care anymore. And this is, again, a link to Richard. Richard was to Trent's dismay planning to start a new band and left Nine Inch Nails during the recording of this album. Trent was notably hurt by this, but decided to shove it to the side. Maybe he grew just as apathetic as his protagonists in his lyrics. In Heresy, the protagonist reveals his disgust with religion. He basically takes on the polar opposite view of Christian believers. In his eyes, religion is the birth of killing, suffering, hypocrisy and ignorance. The most chilling thing is that it doesn't take a genius to see it from this perspective. When singing No One Cares, 
He's probably referring to the fact that religion is playing a smaller and smaller role in modern society. People become way more consumed with technology and other habitual traditions to care about a higher being in the first place. And the protagonist is finding himself in this exact position. March of the Pigs is another commentary on the structures of our society. The protagonist is fed up with materialism, consumerism, and the meaninglessness of everyday life. He basically describes average people as a horde of needy pigs. He is accumulating such a hatred towards his surroundings that he starts fantasizing about destroying it. Closer was for a long time misinterpreted as a lust anthem because of the song's sexual references. Ironically enough, because of this, it was played in the same clubs alongside Madonna's singles during the 90s, which is pretty hard to believe, but it actually happened. You let me violate you. As Trent stated in an interview, it's super negative and super hateful. It's I am a piece of shit, and I'm declaring that, and if you think you want me, here I am. I didn't think it would become a frat party anthem or a titty dancer anthem. You had all of them on your side, didn't you? In this song, Trent sings about a character he calls the Ruiner. This might again be a reference to Mr. Self-Destruct, the protagonist's alter ego from the first song, it almost sounds like the ego is fueling the protagonist to do more self-sabotage without him consciously realizing it. In the last part of the song, we interestingly find a lyrical motif, a line that was previously used in Piggy, the second track. Nothing can stop me now is again a reference to the protagonist's ego that's slowly devouring him and turning him against himself. Now, on the seventh track, The Becoming, Trent describes a transformation from human to machine. You can hear this in both the lyrics and the mechanical and engine-like sounds on the song. But he's not talking about a half-man, half-machine scenario, though. Most likely, he's using the transformation figuratively as a way to describe his loss of feelings and ability to display empathy. He is turning into a shell of his former self. And he's almost framed in a slightly positive way, as if he's gaining new power and that he's liberated from something. In the eighth track, we get to know even more about the life of the protagonist. He's starting to believe that his surroundings aren't real and that the only thing that he can be certain about is his own experience. He's moving from nihilism, neglecting that there's anything meaningful in life, to solipsism, meaning that he's doubting any and all input coming from outside of his own mind. Big Man with a Gun features the most obvious sexual references on the album. It's literally about a girl giving head. And the protagonist threatening to kill her in the process. In an interview, Trent described this as one of the last stages of the protagonist's descent into madness. I had written those lyrics pretty quickly, and I didn't know if I was going to use them or not. To me, the downward spiral builds to a certain degree of madness. Then it changes. That would be the last stage of delirium. So the original point of Big Man with a Gun was madness. But it was also making fun of the whole misogynistic gangster rap bullshit. The tenth track, A Warm Place, is an instrumental track with a juxtaposing mood and melody if compared to the rest of the album. It's very positive and hopeful, and if you listen closely, there's a barely audible line looping over and over that can be heard in the beginning of the song. A person is saying, the best thing about life is knowing that you put it together. It's almost as if the protagonist, for a brief moment, 
realized how deep into insanity he had stumbled, and that it was all a result of his own creation. Eraser is for the most part an instrumental song like A Warm Place. It does have a sequence of lyrics though, or rather a sequence of words. The protagonist talks about himself and his ego, the ruiner, or Mr. Self-Destruct. It's as if the protagonist is realizing how detrimental his ego has been to his life, relationships, and health. He is so consumed by darkness that he contemplates suicide. Now, personally, I've always seen Reptile as a left turn in terms of the themes on the album. The protagonist describes a woman in the same fashion he would describe an animal or insect. He mentions that she has reptilian blood and that insects crawl into her body and that she's a whore and a liar. It's likely that he used this girl as a sexual escape, but found out that it didn't help him in any way, only leading him further down the spiral of his own psychological hell. The 13th song on the album, the title track, is probably one of the most haunting songs you'll find on here. During the first minute, an acoustic guitar gently fades in, playing the same motif that we hear in the end of the fifth track, Closer. There's a lot of noise, odd samples looping, and generally an ominous feel to everything you hear. Thematically, the protagonist's alter ego has completely devoured his rational thinking. It's encouraging him, once again, to commit suicide. Hurt is by far one of Nine Inch Nails' most popular songs. It's also the closure of this album. Here, we find out that the protagonist is reflecting his state of his pain, drug use, and closest friends. It's uncertain whether he killed himself, and these are his final thoughts as his life slowly fades away from him, or if he had an unsuccessful suicide attempt. I hurt myself. These phrases may suggest an unsuccessful suicide attempt, leaving him just wounded. While these phrases suggest that he's either still contemplating suicide or that he's already killed himself. He didn't quote unquote keep himself, so to speak. The thing that makes this album so captivating is how Trent perfectly translates his feelings of hate depression and isolation into music. And the fact that we know so little about the protagonist's story and what happened to him makes it all even more interesting. What do you think happened to the protagonists? And what do you think about this album if you listened to it before? Let me know in the comments below. This video is sponsored by Reverb LP. Click the link in the description below and access exclusive vinyl and CDs while also supporting this channel.